Want to know how to test your fuel pump? Want to know how to get the gas out of your tank if you need to drop the tank? Stay tuned, I'll show you how. Shoot, that stinks. What's up, all my power ass crew? Today I'm gonna show you guys how to get that gas out of your tank and into a jug. Why would you want to do that? Well, what if you got to drop the tank and you got a full tank? I mean, they're kind of heavy, kind of cumbersome to drop the tank. So if you can get it out of there in an easy manner, why not? Or let's just say you're having fuel delivery issues. You don't think you're getting fuel to your fuel rail. How do you test that? That's what it's all about today. Let's do it. Well, the first thing you gotta do is get to your Schrader valve. We're on the driver's side of my Jeep. You come this way, come over this, master cylinder, air intake breather box. Right there is where the Schrader valve is. That's where you test your fuel pressure. If you need to, you know, get one of the loaner tools or something like that, that's where you hook on your little hose to test your fuel pressure at. And if you guys are interested in that video, I'll drop a link down below so you guys can check it out. But the topic for today is how to get the fuel out of your tank without actually dropping your tank or siphoning it, whatever, I'll show you. First thing, let's get that cap off. And you wanna take your rag, stick it down in behind the straighter valve and kinda of set it to where it kinda of ramps upward a little bit like that. Because odds are your fuel system is still under pressure. Then you take your little valve stem remover tool. This is the same tool that you use for like your tires and your valve stems. Same thing. Get down here. You will feel it. When you get engaged, you feel it kind of lock in place. Turn it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Now for whatever reason, my Jeep does not hold a whole lot of pressure, so you may not see the gas squirt out of my rails but most jeeps the later model yj's and tj's they stay under pressure so whenever you take that schrader valve out and start loosening it, it'll shoot gas out Ta -da! and there's the schrader valve right there and that's what's holding the fuel inside your rail and what happens like whenever you do need to do a fuel pressure check and you screw on the little tool from your loaner tool program from whatever auto parts store it pushes down on that little valve right there and it opens up the bottom of it right there to allow the fuel to come up through there so you can read the pressure now what i'm using here is 3 8 fuel line it will go over top of the little straighter valve where you take the cap off and if you got a piece long enough to get to your gas can that you're going to bleed it off into or pump it into whatever this one isn't long enough for me to keep a gas can down here so i'm going to set up on my fender and that, and I'm too lazy to go back to the auto parts store and buy a longer piece just to do this. So, there you go. So, let's get this on there. Get out of my wheel. So, you take, set it over top of your valve there, work it back and forth and push. It makes a pretty good tight fit right there on that fitting. Or, if you want to, you can turn it just like you're doing, you know, tighten up the cap and do it that way too. Here it is, I've got it all the way down on it. Now we do the electrical side. You have your gas can ready, take your fuel line, sit down inside there so whenever the pump activates, it doesn't pump all over the ground or anything. Yes, people, I know. Some of you keyboard warriors gonna tell me, that's the wrong color gas can. That's the wrong color gas can because it says kerosene. Blue is kerosene, red is gasoline. But I don't have anything around here that does kerosene. And when I went and picked up this uh, thing right here, I was on my way to a wheeling event up in Sparta, and I grabbed the first thing they had. Simple as that. Well, it wasn't the first thing. It's the only thing they had, honestly. Anyway, let's get over there. Now, as you see, here's your battery. Here's your fuse block, your power distribution center. Right here, second one over is going to be your fuel pump. And what you want to do is set your wires up. Now, for the electrical side of things, take your cap off here, and you look right here. You've got one port here. And here's where your next relay is going to be. That is where your fuel pump relay is. And I've already got it pulled out right now. Let me explain how this works. Let me set this over here for kicks and giggles to explain this to you. 
all right so if i was to flip this relay over like this here plug it back into it and that's how it would plug in so here's how this works if you guys want to refer back to my relay videos where i did very extensive details on explaining how relays work but i'll give you a quick uh, rundown battery power or key power whatever will come in through this post right here it's always there these two here what you call your 87 post in some cases you got 87 87a sometimes it's a dual 87s in the case of this relay is dual 87s which means this power here will feed both of these posts whenever it's activated and see one side of this right here is going to be a ground you got one post here post here one side's ground one side's going to be your uh, whenever you flip a switch to turn on your accessory lights or, or cooling fan or fuel pump or whatever it's going to the power your switch power is going to be on one side of this post here the other side is going to be ground therefore completing the circuit inside the relay which clamps the coil together therefore transferring power from this post to these posts in this case this is both it's a dual 87 here so whenever power gets transferred from here to these it activates both of these legs instead of just one now an a7a87 uh, relay what that would do is whenever there's no power across these posts right here the relay is in its naturally open state which means here to here you're going to have power cross between those two but as soon as power activates here you turn on your switch it removes power from this one and adds power to that one that's an 87a relay honestly in this fuel pump video that ignored pretty much everything i just said because that just complicates the whole process of what i'm doing but i used to teach classes for a living so therefore i just kind of go into teacher mode so just for the sake ignore this post right here this post ignore it this don't exist here to here is all we're worried about so if you notice when i say here to here is all you worry about that's where i got my wire stuck at i got one stuck in here and one stuck in there so whenever i activate that switch it's going to transfer power from this port from this blade over to this blade or should i say from this blade to this blade that will complete the circuit going back to the fuel pump therefore turn on the fuel pump and it'll start pumping fuel pretty simple all right so the way i've got this set up right here is there's really two different ways this right here is just a regular toggle switch i can flip the toggle turn on the pump do the pump will pressurize the fuel rail over there and start pumping fuel into the jug or this right here is what you call a, a remote start button i've got it clamped under the post right there and i've got it stretched out over there so where i can go over there i can just push a button and make it pump let's go over and check it out okay got my little push button here Take your little fuel line. We'll go hold it out just above. You can see I've already tested everything. Make sure I get a good connection. You can see a little fuel wet that's on the end of the hose. Hold it up here. Push the button. Look at that. Fuel pump pump of fuel right into the jug. What does that tell me? Well, for one, that tells me my fuel pump's working. And for two, if I need to drain the tank, like if I need to drop the tank for anything and I've got a full tank, if I need to drain it, I'd go over and I'd trip that toggle switch, or even you can make a jumper wire go from one side to the other and be fine too. But just for the sake of this tutorial where I could control things in between camera shots, I set up on these switches where I could control things better. But yep, see, sends fuel to the fuel pump and we got gas. Pretty simple, huh? Now, as I mentioned, I had the little push button over where I could control the gas flow for the sake of video processing. But you could also just take a wire, a good heavy gauge wire. Now, probably use at least a 12 gauge to jump. Just make a jumper wire from here to there, and you can trip that fuel pump into pumping. And whenever you get to the point that your jug there is getting full, you can simply come over and pull out the jumper wire, and it'll shut the fuel pump off. Or if you set up on a toggle switch like I've got going on here, you can put simply flip the toggle switch it'll turn it'll break the circuit going to the fuel pump it'll allow you to get another jug in place if you've got a full tank or whatever the case may be for you so it's pretty simple you simply take i'm using uh, fork terminals here simply because i was out of spades and i wouldn't go into the store to get any but this is nothing more than a couple pieces of wire i stuck in that port there and just to recap which ones you put them into you notice how these two right here are parallel they're in line with each other like your fingers put them side by side that means parallel they, these two right here are parallel with each other 
this one is perpendicular to this one because if you was to project it straight into a straight line as this, it'd form a 90 degree angle, so therefore it is perpendicular. So whenever you, you're on your boss relays, as you see here, this straight one here being perpendicular to these two, that's always your transfer of, of uh, high voltage or high amperage, I say. You're gonna have your battery voltage here, be it coming from the battery or someplace that's keyed power, whatever the case may be, this is gonna be your high amperage post. These two posts right here get activated, clamps the coil inside the relay, transfers the power to this post right here, and allows your fuel pump or your electric fan, your lights, or whatever to do its thing. There you go. And once you're done, you pull your little wires back out, pop your relay back in. Still having your rag in place, you want to take your fuel line and wiggle it a little bit. And see, you got a little bit come out the hose right there. Keep the hose turned up like this. Bring it up, let it drain off into the jug. And stick this end in the jug to catch any runoff. Then you take your little straighter valve here. And remember how you took it out. This is the needle end right here. This is your end that seals. This is the end goes back into the port. Take it. Put it into the port, it just kind of drops in. Take your little tool. And screw it back in. And whenever you go tighten it up, like right now, I'm starting to feel resistance, okay? Just give it a little bump. I mean, once you feel it make contact, just maybe maybe a quarter turn, if even that, stop. You don't want that too tight, because if you damage inside that rail right there, or damage that straighter valve, the straighter valve can be hard to get out, which in turn will damage inside the uh, port of the fuel rail, and you'll be pulling the whole fuel rail off just to replace it because of some script threads. Don't get froggy, okay? Moral of the story. Take your cap. Put it back on. Feel contact. Give it a little snug. You're done. So one thing I didn't mention. Do you have to have the key on? No, you don't. Because actually my keys are laying in the passenger side seat right now. Now how you want to do the electrical side of this is totally up to you. You can make a little jumper wire, jump from one you know, blade to another. It'll trigger the pump, it'll do its thing from there. Whenever you get done or you need to switch out your jugs, simply pull that wire out and you're good to go. Uh, I like to use switches. That way I'll just walk up, flip a switch, or like I got that momentary switch. But the only reason I use that momentary uh, switch, which is a remote starter switch, what it actually is, is because I'm doing all the whole video thing here. So it helps me control my camera shots much better. But under a normal circumstance when I'm doing this, I would just simply put the toggle switch in, port, port, toggle switch comes out, flip the switch, let it pump gas. Then whenever I need to change out the uh, jugs, I flip the switch back off, change out my jugs, you know, put the hose back in the uh, empty jug, flip the uh, switch, let it pump some more. That's simple. So like I said, it's an easy way to get the fuel out of your tank if you need to drop it. Or if you need to figure out if you're having fuel delivery issues, this is also a good way to test your fuel pump if it's working, okay? So if you enjoyed this video and you learned a little something from it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and leave me school comments down below, because I make these videos so I can save you money. Aight? Aight. Alright everyone, I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace. Later y'all.